So I'm going to take you on an in-depth tour of the bus. So my last video was just kind of how I built it and the, the steps. So this is the detailed um, tour of how I put things together. Before I go inside to show you the inside, um, I thought I'd show you my hitch. The whole goal of building this bus was to pull my horse trailer around. So I had a threat class three hitch put on. Um, this is just a little tiny backup camera, which is super nice. But this is my hitch and I couldn't get the chain hooks on here. So I put some big, big um, connectors on that made it a lot easier. But this, this is a whole reason for this bus is to pull my horse trailer around. Okay. I figured I'd start my bus tour with a view, I'm hoping I can get it high enough, of my two solar panels that I mounted on the top. Each, each panel is 100 watts, and then I have a large battery, a deep cycle marine battery inside that has been holding a charge very, very well for me. Works great for my tiny refrigerator and little USB fans, so I'm really happy with the solar situation. Let's go inside. So I'll start with the steps. These steps right here were actually in pretty bad shape, so I painted them all black. I put matching vinyl there, and then I actually took an angle grinder and cut out the rusted step and put treated wood down instead, and that makes for a nice sturdy step. As you go in, I left the door go. I know I could have put something different in over here as a door, but I kind of like the swinging door. Left my first aid kit because it's still a bus. Now this, dash. I don't know if you call it a dash or whatever. It actually was a piece of fiberglass and it was all falling apart and it rattled when I went down the road. So I took it off and used it as a template to make a plywood piece that goes over instead. So you can see the whole plywood piece right there. And then I made a box for my little switches. This compartment also had a rusty old door. So I took that off and put a wood one on with a cute little decal. If you turn around, you see that I had some wasted space right here. And so I put a trash can in the back. I made a little box that slides out. I had to put a pin on it because as I drove down the road, it jiggled itself out and the cooler would fall over. It was a mess. So now it's hooked in. The cooler sits on top as well. And this is my dinette. That actually has pins in the back. You pull the pins out and then tuck the leg underneath and the whole thing sits down. And of course, like any normal dinette, those actually form the bed. The leg itself is just a piece of wood that's held on with a little hinge right here. So the hinge swings the leg back and it sits on little tracks right there. I did put some cabinets in. The cabinets have pistons in it, which are wonderful. I'd highly suggest that that holds the cabinet doors open. So you don't have to fumble and hold the doors open. Found some nice little containers that fit perfectly in there. This is my electricity center. I've got a outlet for a cigarette lighter. And then I got some USB ports and it tells me the voltage. Just hung a little coat hook right there. My bathroom is next. It sits over the wheel well, which is perfect because these little porta potties are like training potty chairs. They sit so low, you kind of, as an adult, they're too low. So it sits on the wheel well, and now it's a perfect height. And I mentioned this before, but I wanted to be able to open the window in the bathroom. So in order to do that and to fit a full size bed, I had to actually bring the wall in. And when I did that, um, I had to angle it a little bit. So I still have my window here. I had some space up there. So I put some tins up there and put a bunch of toiletries up there. And that works perfect. I did decide to strap the porta potty down so it didn't bounce out, which could probably be really ugly driving down the road. Made a little toilet paper holder, hand sanitizer, all sorts of goodies. This is the bedroom. Now you can see I have some power outlets there. My solar panels come in right in a weird spot, so I put a little box around them. And the back of the bus is longer than a full-size mattress. So I made a headboard that when I pop the pillows up, I can use it as a backrest. That right there 
actually is a, like a cold air return because right below it is the heater for the bus. And I decided to leave it in so if I'm driving down the road and my engine overheats, I can flip the heater on and draw some heat off the engine. And where that comes out at is down here. So I made a box and you really can't see it, but I made a box around the heater, insulated it and everything, and then the air is gonna blow out here. This is just a piece of wood that sits on a little aluminum track. So I just slide it back and forth. Here is my bed. If anybody's wondering, I did drill holes so that the mattress can breathe. That was a big concern. My kitchen area. This is all wood that I had left over from my truck cap camper. So I decided to use it all up. That's this wood here. This and the countertops are from a tree that I had cut down in my backyard and milled it into um, thick boards. So I decided to cut it into pieces and make a frame. These drawers themselves actually are just plywood boxes and they slide in and out. And they're actually quite big and quite deep. They do not come out when I'm driving down the road, which is really nice. This is my Flame King two burner stove. And I really like it, it works great. I decided to use some leftover metal to make a little baffle because I had watched some videos where people were showing off their bus conversions and this was all charred up here from their stove. So I wanted to make sure that I, there you go, you can see it. I had some airflow away from the cabinets. My kitchen area. I have just a simple little hand pump sink and then down the bottom I have, and it's kind of messy, but I have my water and then my gray water and that just gets strapped down when I'm driving down the road. In the back I have my little propane tank and that's for my stove. Again here is my um, DC fridge. It also runs on AC. By the way, the cabinet sits on the wheel well right there. So that space right there is actually the wheel well and I had to do something with it. So now the wheel well just kind of disappears. The curtains came from a, an upholstery shop where they had leftover fabric left on the bolts for like five bucks. So i am got a whole bunch of canvas looking kind of fabric. And what's great about the bus is the magnets. So little curtain holdbacks are just magnets. Dollar Tree has cat collars for a dollar. So that works really well for um, holding your paper towels in place when you're driving down the road. In fact, on my little vinyl accordion door for the bathroom, that is just a cat collar as well. I just screwed it in the back. Now I had to cover up the wires that went along the side here. I use a one by four and then I actually put a little piece of wood on the back because it was at a funny angle. But this left big holes. So what I did is I made these ash wood curtain rods. And so what I did is I just put one of them in the hole and then put a little a little piece of wood on the front. Now this ends up being a coat hook. I got a couple of coat hooks. What's really awesome about a bus is it's metal and everything's magnetic. So you can put hooks all over the place. In fact, you can put lights all over the place. So this is my bus. And I tried to cover everything that I could think of that I kind of worked on. I did not show you the electrical, but that's on another video. You can see how I put that together. And it's working pretty well for me. Very happy with it.